you can actually use your Nigerian dollar card to withdraw pounds. I'm outside in an AMG, right outside, TT, two turn baby girl, you know me. Hi guys, welcome to another video. Thank you to all my subscribers for returning and watching this video. Thank you to all my new subscribers for subscribing to my channel. I see your comments and then your likes and yeah, the channel is growing. I'm actually very, very excited. So thank you to everybody, to all of my subscribers, new and returning. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to um, the likers and the commenters of this video. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, shout out to you. Like, you guys are the real OGs. Hey, Yosha, so after my vote of things, let's get, let's quickly get into the video. What am I holding in there? I don't even know. Oh, basically, um, today's video is basically going to be about what are the things that you should do when you first arrive into the UK. So if you have been following my previous video series, it was basically, okay, me getting ready in Nigeria to me on the plane. So now, now it's like, what are the first things that I did when I came into the UK? Just basically to serve as a guide for you and then I think answer one or two questions that I got in the comment section. So let's get straight into the video. So the very first thing that you should do when you get into the UK, that's if you haven't done that already, is to get your SIM card. In my previous video, I explained that when you apply for your student visa, um, they'll give you a SIM card that you can actually use when coming into the UK, which was what I used. If probably, I don't know, maybe they have stopped giving or you weren't able to get or you misplaced it or you just didn't come with it. I think like the first thing that you should do is get a SIM card just so that you are connected to, you're able to connect to the internet. I mean, you can be roaming with your Nigerian SIM, but for how long? At the end of the day, you have to get a SIM card anyways. And then if you are registering to any platform or any any form of registration, there are devs going to ask you for your phone number. You don't want to be putting your Nigerian number in there. So have your SIM card ready first. Have your SIM card and then your UK number ready first. So after you've done that and then everything is green, smooth and all of that, another thing that you should do is to get your BRP. What is BRP basically? So you know how if you sign up, if you're working at an organization, they'll give you an ID card that, okay, yes, this um, person is one of us, is our employee. Or if like if, if you're going to school, they'll give you a student ID card that, yes, you are my student. So basically, a BRP is like the UK government saying that, okay, yes, this person is legally here, or permitted to be here. So it's like an ID card issued to you by the UK government. So that is the one that they will ask for most in the UK. They won't really ask for, they would ask for your passport when you are signing up to one or two things. But for private organizations, just for them to see that you are actually here legally in the UK, it's the BRP that they would usually ask for because that is given by the British government. So that is the one that they are more familiar with. So if you have gotten your visa, then they've already printed your BRP and it's already at the post office. So just check. They give you a letter when they give you your visa that this is where you are supposed to pick up your BRP from. So just check your that letter and then go and pick up your BRP. Also, I should mention that when you get your BRP, I think you should just snap it or scan it and then store it away somewhere because what you are going to be using the BRP for most of the time is uploading it. And then you can always use a picture for forms of identification as well. Because if you were to travel out of the country, it's your BRP that you will use to enter back into the UK, if you get what I mean. Because if you check your visa that you were given, the visa is actually just for entry. You know that you're going to stay here for at least one year. And if you check it, the expiry date of the visa is before one year. That's because the visa is just for you to enter the country at that time. When you enter, then you pick up your BRP. So if you want to travel out again, is that BRP that you will use to come back into the country, if you get what I mean. It's not the visa that you use again because it may have expired or, you know, what not. But basically, it's the BRP that you would use if you have to come out of the country. So it's actually very important that you keep it safe. So I would say that you should snap it on your phone and have like a scanned copy on your phone and then just keep it away with your other important documents. You don't have to be carrying it up and down because you can easily misplace it. And I don't know how, I'm sure you can get it replaced, but I don't know, they'll probably charge you, you know, UK and then fees. So they'll definitely will probably charge you for replacement and then it's just probably going to delay i don't really know how they go about BRP replacements but it's better that you don't even get to that story at all so once you have it snap it scan it snap it and scan it so scan it for like uploading and then snap it just so that in case you are asked or on the road or you know what not you probably won't be asked but just in case 
just snap it on your phone and then scan it and then keep it safe don't carry it up and down every single day because there's a high chance there's a probability that you're going to misplace it and that is just definitely not what the risk 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 it's definitely, it's definitely not worth risking it. So the third thing I would say is get your student ID card slash complete your registration because it's at the point of completing your registration that they would now like issue the ID card that everything has been done and everything has been complete. So it's basically just saying that, okay, you're done with your registration, everything is fine, you're completed, like it's all good, you're okay to proceed with your studies. That is what that whole thing is for. And apart from that, the student ID card is used to access some, probably some places in the school during off like is it working hours or what would i say because like in my school if you want to go to like the library on the weekend or sometime after seven because it's open to four seven i want to go there when it's like really late you need your id card and then it's just another form of identification as well after that what would i say you should for me like because when i came in i was staying at airbnb for i think like the first week i didn't have an actual apartment because i kept trying to find online i wasn't able to get i had to start going to do viewings for possible apartments that i'm going to have to book obviously i'm used to the place i don't know how i'm going to be able to go around so google maps was very very helpful for me to get from one place to the other and they also have this transport for greater manchester sites websites so it basically all the trains all the buses and all the trams in manchester they are all connected to that network so if you need to get from point a to point b you just input it in there and then it would advise you on the trains to take the trams to take or the buses to take you know as required you are definitely going to get lost your first whatever time going going at it on your own you're definitely going to get lost and then you can't be taking uber everywhere every single time because at the end of the day money is just counting money is just going so if you get google maps and then if you're in manchester i'm sure probably other places would have their own transportation networks that connects all their buses and trains together that you can just see what is available just find what it is for your states yeah states Manchester states. So find what it is for your states and then use that to get around to get around for your viewings. And then Google Maps is also helpful for places that you probably don't need to take a bus or whatnot. You have to is it trek or walk or pedestrian it. Well, basically google maps is good for that because it just show you like how to turn where to turn because not everywhere that the buses would get to some you actually have to walk by yourself on your leg so google maps will help you with that it has this live view function that will basically just show that you can just show google maps okay this is where i am where should i turn to and then to show you exactly where to turn which is just actually perfect for getting around in the place and especially if you are going to be looking at new houses to rent and all of that because renting is the renting is another story on its own and really i don't even know what the key is or how the best way to find an apartment because it's definitely going to be stressful for everybody i wouldn't think like not even a country thing like even in nigeria if you're looking for a house to rent i mean nigerian agents you know how it is they are so renting is definitely difficult for wherever it is you find yourself so just have that google map so that you're able to meet your and then yes exactly it's also tell you how long it should take for you to get to where you are because if you have an appointment you have to know that you have to leave at this time their buses are work their buses are timed so like if it says it's leaving by this time sometimes it's delayed but it's definitely that time it's most likely going to leave so if you have an appointment and then you know that okay the journey is going to take you about 40 minutes then you have to be ready at least 15 minutes you have to be on your way at least 15 minutes too so that once you if you miss your appointment viewing appointment and whatnot you may not still be able to view the apartment and then you've traveled all the way for nothing so like what is the point so that helps you to time what your journey is going to be and then it helps you to even navigate your journey so google maps extremely important and then transport for greater manchester the site um that is for people staying in manchester if you are not staying in manchester again find out what is applicable for your location so i've mentioned i'm just going to go back again so that's ringing in everybody's ears um your phone number your brp or your british id card um then your student id card 
Google Maps slash the transportation network for your state or county. After that, I would say that you should try and open a bank account. Basically, there are two types of accounts you can open in the UK. They have the digital ones. Those ones are like your piggy vest. They don't have like an actual branch or, you know, bunch of employees and all of that things. Then the traditional banks like your normal regular GT bank and whatnot. So it's much easier to open um, a digital bank when you are just coming because the traditional banks the same way the banks over there in Nigeria would ask you for like your utility bill and all of that they would want a proof of address for where you are staying and like me I didn't have like a place that I was staying exactly yet so I didn't have like a proof of address to give them you could also get a letter from your school for the traditional banks yeah if you want to do that that's also an option for you but I would say you can just open a digital bank first um, some of them are like Monzo, Revolut, I think Moniz, I don't know about a lot of the other two, but I know Monzo and Revolut because I use Revolut myself and then Monzo, I also tried to sign up to Monzo, but there was like one or two delays. So let me just talk about the two that I know, that I know because I've signed up with them. For Revolut, you can open your account like this, like you just start, you sign up and then your account is already open. They will charge you £50 to deliver your card and then your card will be delivered and then you know you're good to go. For Monzo, you have to wait till you, till you receive your card before you can open your account. So you will finish all the stages and whatnot and they'll be like, okay, it's time to activate your card. So you actually have to wait till you get that card and then you activate it before you can start using the account. So for me, I wasn't able to wait for that whole period before I get my card. That was why I switched over to Monzo. Sorry, that's why I switched over to Revolut because my account was already open. They gave me, they showed me what my card number was in the app already and they charged me £50 for the delivery of the card. So I needed something quick and fast. So that was why I went over to Revolut. So I would say either Revolut or Monzo, they're actually really, they're actually really good, I guess. Yeah. Then also, I think an advantage that Monzo has over Revolut is that because I know one or two people are coming in with cash. Monzo can allow you to actually pay in that cash. There are certain pay points around UK or whatnot that you can pay in cash into your Monzo account. Revolut, there's like no way for you to pay in cash directly into your Revolut account. What you can do is probably find somebody that has a traditional bank. They pay it into their bank and transfer it to you, which is, you know, it's an option. Or, but with Monzo, you can go to the pay points and then pay in your cash. There's a limited amount of cash you can pay in power. Is it per month? If they, there's obviously there'll be a limit that you can pay per month. I don't know what that limit is because again, like I said, I didn't use Monzo. I use Revolut. <clears throat> so you can pay in your cash with your Monzo account, but just remember that you have to wait for. I think it was like up to one week before they bought the card, so you won't have any account at all. Again, going back to what I said in my other video, you can actually use your Nigerian dollar card to withdraw pounds. It's just like the way you pay for things online. You just input the card, you input the amount you want to withdraw. The bank will do the convert, con it's a conversation. The bank will do the conversion for you and then give you your money. It's like, that's just it. There is no uh, whatever involved. There are charges, however, you have to pay $10 for every single time you withdraw so even if you are drawing ten dollar there's a ten dollar charge if you are drawing whatever dollar it is there's a ten dollar charge also you cannot withdraw more than one thousand dollars in a day which was approximately i think about 750 pounds as at then now that the exchange rate is moving crazy i'm not sure what it would be but you cannot attempt to withdraw more than one thousand dollars in a day you have to do at this 750 that's so 750 pounds to pay come back the next day do another 750 pounds and then you know withdraw it small small like that but apart from those two the ten dollar charge and then the one thousand dollar limitation daily limitation you can actually withdraw cash you can actually withdraw pounds cash you can also use your nigerian dollar card to pay for things in the uk Honestly, it's as simple as how you would have. It's even much simpler than how we use it at home because 
they have contactless payments if your card is a contactless card my card my nigerian my, my nigerian dollar card was from gt bank and it was a contactless card and how you would know if your card is a contactless card is with this symbol they just usually put it on the card so if you have this symbol on your card then it's contactless so for you to even pay for like your bus tickets or pay for groceries or pay for food in a restaurant you simply just have to tap and go that's it you just tap the place and then you're done if I, it's very very easy to spend money in this space so you just tap and go you don't even have to be putting pin current or savings all those you know jump questions that they'll be asking you you just tap and go if it's a contactless card if not you just put it in and then you actually have to use your pin if it is not contactless there's also like the one you sign i don't know either about that but if you have your dollar card especially if it's contactless you may not even need to withdraw cash you can just use it to tap and go so again open your account and then obviously you need to open accounts in case you start getting jobs and you have to be paid yeah so that's like another reason to open your account and then obviously you just need to have an account in the uk now like you know you're going to have that <clears throat> then i think what i would say which is like um another thing you should do is register for your gp find out your yeah, gp is around your area and then register with them just so that in an event that you fall sick you know they have your history and your information and all of that you register online and then the gp would invite you for an appointment just to you know discuss your current health conditions just to assess you and know that if you're ever sick you can always go for go and meet your gp and then you know get health advice because health is wealth and health is obviously very important Another thing I would say again, which is important, is obviously jobs because there are well, a lot of payments, a lot of bill payments that you have to do. So you have to have some form of income coming in. Now, I know that a lot of employers would ask you for your national insurance number, which you should register for when you're coming. But they can also ask for your share code. Could your employer can basically check on the UK government website that you are actually eligible to work. So that's one thing that I see that employers are asking for now, as opposed to your NI number and then your share code. You just go to this link and then you impute all your details. You have to put your BRP number and then you impute every single thing they ask you for basically and then it will give you that share code so if your employer is if you have like maybe an interview or a whatever and then person is like you have your ni number you can say no but you have like a share code and they can use that one instead and in fact there was one or two they didn't even ask me for my ni number they asked me for my share code instead so i think that's like a new thing that the employers are using to verify because ni sometimes deletes but also obviously apply for your ni number too i would like to advise that you apply for your ni number when you are in a location that you know that like you are in an address that you know that you are staying for at least six months because ni number can also be used like the when you get the number it can also be used as a proof of address so if you are applying for your ni number in when you are staying in like an airbnb and then you're not staying there again but you have a proof of address for you know another place it's just I mean, at the end of the day it's like you can't use that airline data for anything you can't use it as a proof of address again but if you are able to find somewhere that you are going to stay at least permanently for at least six months then apply for your ni number and let you come there because but you can use it for some banks as a proof of address i think some employers also would um accept your ni letter as a proof of address ni letter yeah if you don't have like um all these utility bills if you haven't started paying bills your ni letter can also serve as a proof of address so try and put in an address that you know that you are going to be there for at least some period of time not just like an airbnb or a hotel or somewhere that you'll be living soon or like even your school except you're staying in school you know then that's fine but if not try and put an address that you know that you are going to be staying for a very very long time again i should reiterate that as international students you're only allowed to look, work 20 hours per week during term time and then out of term time you can work 40 hours it's going to be quite difficult at the beginning stage to find jobs definitely but there are a lot of recruitment agencies that um that you can sign up to and they will be pushing available ships for you the thing is with those recruitment agencies again you will need things like you know your bank account you need things like proof of address that you may not have gotten so easily so i think like an option for a quick job is the opportunity or whatnot is um unit terms in your school i think for my school is unit terms like every single school has like a part-time 
job website for their students so you just find out the one that is for your school again that's why you should have completed your registration but you just find out the one that your school offers and then you go on that site and then you see all of the jobs there are like temporary jobs that you know the students can actually apply to so that one for your school and then yeah you, you get the chance to like work in school like be a student ambassador be like a tour guide or you know work in like you know the what's it called admin admissions office or where they need help like part-time so you can work there um indeed flex is also another option you just sign up again you don't need your ni number they'll just ask you for your share code and then you give that to them then you also have to verify yourself for one or two positions the issue with indeed flex is that they don't because a lot of people tend to use it once a shift is available it goes like this like to be there one minute and then you see that it's already filled especially if you're in an area in an area that doesn't have like a lot of shifts and then they can only verify you for so many positions depending on that for things like weight and button that you actually have to have experience apparently you can't just come and say oh you know how to carry weights and all of that so you actually have to have experience but there are general jobs that that one day as far as you know you are able to they just need people to do it they don't need like any special skills and with jobs like that once it's available on the indeed flex portal it goes like quickly like this but if you're able to get one you know hopefully you have fast like it's based on fastest finger first so if you're one of the fastest finger and then you're able to get that you can at least have that shift pick you can actually pick up a shift without having to like do your ni and all those then obviously then you will need a, a uk bank account that they can pay you into again that's why the revolut being the faster option was what i went for another option for jobs is actually to just walk into like your city center uh, you know where they have like a lot of shopping malls just walk into like their you know all the their retail shops or betting casinos and whatnot and just tell them that you actually need a job and that you are just coming to the country these are the documents you have and then they can be able to fix you up with something temporarily i think a lot of shops like is it h&m sports direct um and obviously your mcdonald's kfc and all of that if you can they tend to uh, accept like students and you know people looking for part-time jobs a bit more easier yeah so you can try that as an option for your jobs you can also wait and have all your documents ready and then start applying to recruitment agencies because those ones will give you like a more long-term you know day-to-day -day type of job thing that you know you can do so you can try that as an option for your job search but again these things they vary depending on where you are they are different um, recruitment agencies for like different places and all of that so it's important that you talk to people that have been there like there are different schools have different intakes so if you're coming in september try and talk to people that have been there since like january or you know period of time before you speak to the students that okay what and what and what are the opportunities available i'm sure they'll definitely give you one or two options um to help out if you're in like your university's group chat with other students just put it out there that you are looking for a part-time job what places around you know our school and whatnot or even in the school would you advise that they look out for and then they will give you help depending on where it is you are so just reach out if you can look for students because at the end of the day you guys would even be in the same classes and whatnot so if you can just reach out to them and then just ask okay what are the um possible job opportunities that i can get you know it's definitely something that they will definitely help you out with there is no one size fits all there is no like one single guideline for these things unfortunately it's just what is applicable for you as a person again and then for the area that you are staying in like if you get what i mean so just going to run through everything i said again just as a real summary your phone number obviously because when you are registering for jobs even accommodations and whatnot you will need a phone number that, that they should contact you on your brp which is your like your british identification card if you get what i mean then your student id card that you would use to access one or two things in your school google maps and then the transportation network for where it is you are staying your bank accounts your bank details again don't forget that you can use your dollar card here in the uk they are just going to charge you one to certain fees um register for a gp because health is important i haven't registered for my gp if i'm being honest my mom when i was coming she anointed me with the precious blood of jesus and that's what has been keeping me but i'll try and register for my gp as soon as i possibly can then with jobs again your student your universities um temporary job website you can try and get flex you can try read there are one or two things you can try depending on where your area is so 
do all those things hopefully you settle down on time hopefully it's a small ride hopefully you're able to get like a new accommod a, a, a good accommodation on time with um housemates that are not annoying hopefully you get the perfect job for you and then hopefully every single thing goes out well for all of us on this our journey in this new country thank you guys for staying to the end of the video i love you all so much for engaging with my channel for liking for subscribing if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscription button below join the family like this video give it a thumbs up let me hear what you have to say in the comment section i've been ranting for how long now but let me hear what you have to say in the comment section and then i'll be back with my next video that one's most likely going to be a vlog honestly yeah i think so so i'll back with my next video by next week yeah thank you guys all so much bye